thing's still here. <laughs> Sweet. Okay. Well, I've been gone for a while, but let's do this again. Welcome. Hello. I'm Colin Weaver from IT Dojo. These are the IT Dojo CISSP questions of the day, where I come at you randomly and without any measure of predictability and offer you two questions uh, each time to help you study for your CISSP exam. So let's jump right back into it. All right. As it relates to the European Union's General Data Protection Regulation, GDPR, which of the following have been added under the requirement to protect people's personally identifiable information or their personal data. Uh, here is your list of choices. I'm looking for two from the list that have been added or expanded upon, added and or, or expanded upon, um, compared to what the old EU privacy directive actually had within it. So take a moment. Click pause if you need to, give those a read, pick two of them, and let me know what uh, two it's gonna be, and then we can talk it through. All right, first choice, your physical or physiological characteristics. No, uh, that is part of GDPR. It was also part of the EU Privacy Directive, so uh, that is nothing new. Second option on the list is something about you genetically, something in your DNA. Uh, also, no, that has always existed in the EU Privacy Directive and is also included in personal data for the GDP, uh, for GDPR. So again, that's not anything new either. Uh, number three is also nothing new. Identification number um, has also been around since before GDPR came to be. So that's not one of the choices that we're looking for. Uh, the next choice, your mental status. Nope, that's also not included. Uh, or I'm sorry, that was included in the EU Privacy Directive and continues to be included in the uh, in, in, in a GDPR. Uh, next choice is location data. Yes, uh, location data can include things like your GPS coordinates, uh, but it also includes things like um, you know what direction you're moving, uh, certainly where you are. Um, those kinds of things that can be used to identify where physically you are in the world are considered location data, and those are all now can uh, very much fall into the category of personal data, uh, and therefore it has to be protected, and there's a bunch of rules regarding it. Um, and so that stuff has been expanded because things like location tracking, and anybody who's got a smartphone knows that uh, most apps that you go out and make use of want to know where you are and want to track your location, and because uh, there's money in that and there's power in that. And um, so that information is, is now under GDPR also protected. How about economic status? Um, how you doing financially, stuff like that? Uh, nope, that's always been included uh, in the EU Privacy Directed and it's also information in GDPR, as well as your cultural and social identity. Um, those things also um, have been protected information prior to GDPR, so that's not new. And then the very last one is actually the second right answer choice that we're looking for, which is your online identifiers. Uh, this could include uh, a wide number of different types of values. It could be things as straightforward as, say, GPS coordinates or IP addresses or MAC addresses. Uh, it, could be a, it could be an MZ uh, for your phone or an IMEI value that's on your phone. Uh, it could be an RFID tag. Uh, it could be information from IoT related devices, Internet of Things related devices, and it could also include things like online pseudonyms, you know, other names that you go by on the internet. Um, so all of those can be included in that information, things that might be able to go in and actually identify who you are. Um, it's, the list has you know, expanded greatly under GDPR, again, because you know, the, the nature of technology continues to change and evolve and GDPR is trying to account for and accommodate that. All right, let's move on to question number two. Uh, question number two is, which of the following is a new requirement under the European Union's General Data Protection Regulation, or GDPR? So here is your list of things from which to pick. I want you to just pick one of them. One of them is new. Uh, which one is it? Click pause, give them a read. When you're ready, click play. We'll walk it through. I'll cut to the chase on this one. All of these existed prior to GDPR. They persist in GDPR, except the right to be forgotten is new under GDPR. Uh, 
this is very easily evidenced by, I suspect you've seen, uh, the ability to now go in and actually have your account deleted on certain websites. Not the least of which is a website like Facebook. If you go back in time to pre-GDPR days and you decided that you were done with this whole Facebook thing, uh, when you went in to try and delete your account, what you would have discovered is that you could only deactivate your account. Uh, Facebook would not let you delete your account. You could just go in and say, I want to deactivate it, I want to use it. Um, so, but it continued to exist, and if for some bizarre reason, two years later, you were to log in again, uh, your account would be reactivated and Facebook would welcome you back with open arms and all your stuff was still there. Uh, with GDPR in effect, you now have the right to be forgotten, which means that you can actually go in and delete your Facebook account, and Facebook, in order to comply with GDPR, will actually erase all your stuff. Um, so they'll get rid of any record of you. And you can thank GDPR for that, that you now have the right, even outside of the European Union, you now have the right to be forgotten. All right, two more questions down. Appreciate you being here. Hope you enjoyed the questions. Click like if you did, subscribe if you're new, all that good stuff. And again, if you like my shirt, you'll find a link down below where you can pick up one for yourself. And uh, I will appreciate it. So I'll see you guys soon. Bye.